Hey y'all. So I've been looking into um, prayer and what prayer means, uh, specifically the root words. And there are various root words from the New and Old Testament, but one that stood out to me comes from Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Um, when Daniel kneeled to pray. The first root word is a Hebrew word, silah, which means to bow. And it corresponds word, co corresponds to the Hebrew word, sile, which means to be limb or to be lame. So first, those two words to me means we're coming in a, a position of humbling ourselves, yielding ourselves, coming before our God, our King, to speak to him. But the denominative word of sila, sile, is, sounds similar to the first one, Sila, and I could be pronouncing these very wrong, forgive me. Um, but that word means to curve a rib or rib cage, which was interesting to me because then it took me back to the creation of man and woman. God said it wasn't good for man to be alone, and He put Adam into a deep sleep and He took a rib from his side and created a woman. The head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is man because man did not come from woman but woman came from man. She is literally come of him from his side. And it took me to the forming of man by God. It said that God created man and his image and the image of God created he, man, both man and female. When he created man, he formed of the dust of the ground clay and he breathed the breath of life. But I took into account the rib. He came of God king from God. So prayer is a communing with God, coming under his wing, coming alongside of. The rib helps assist in breathing. It protects the organs and the upper cavity, and it helps hold up the upper extremities. The rib hears the heartbeat. The rib comes in front of the heart to protect it. The rib assists in breathing out. That is us with God. That's what prayer is. It says in the beginning that the voice of the Lord walked in the cool of the day with the man and the woman. It's a relationship. It's a knowing the heart of God. It's a hearing the heartbeat of God. It's a yielding and surrendering and knowing that we need him. In everything, in every decision, in every step, in every direction, we can't do it on our own. And every hurt and every wound and every joy and, and every breath and every word we take. It's communing with God. Just as John laid on the bosom of Christ. John wasn't boasting or saying that he was loved more when he says John the Beloved. He just understood the relationship and the love of Christ, the sonship. 
and that's the place we need to get back to. Understanding what God truly did for us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He walked among us, took on every temptation, and by his stripes we are healed. Not just healed of physical wounds, but eternal. Every stripe, every beating, every wound, every deep cut, every ounce of blood represents eternal scarring and wounds that we experience in this life. And it's only the love of Christ that can heal that. God isn't restrictive. God isn't harsh. God isn't containing, but in him is freedom and life. Freedom of things that we thought we needed in life. We may think true freedom comes from being able to do anything we want to, but as children and their parents, children sometimes think they need to touch the fire, hold the fire, and the parents tell them, no, why? Because it's painful and it hurts. But to the child, it seems like we're holding them back from something, keeping them something they can't have. Until they actually touch the fire and realize the whole time the parent was protecting them. That's Christ. And he wants to protect you. God wants to protect you and guard you to be your refuge, your strength. That's why... We have the cross. That's why we have Calvary. The blood that was shed for us. And that's why we have the resurrection. To live and not die. To be set free. Of all the pain and hurt. Does that mean trials and tribulations won't come? No. In this world we will. We'll have that. But we have one that we can run to a strength, an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And that's him. That's Christ. One who always knows and always understands. So seek him today. If you're hurting, if you're struggling, listen for the voice of the Lord to lead you and guide you. He'll show you the way, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. I love you all. Have a good day.